The Jeep Compass is a capable ride. It's available front wheel drive or with Jeep's 4x4 capability. And one of the benefits of the Compass is that it's not going to be as big as the Cherokee or Grand Cherokee, which means that you've got a vehicle that's got pretty good fuel mileage with incredible off-road capability. Especially when you look at the Trailhawk or Trailhawk Elite models, the Trailhawk Elite, the one that we're looking at today. Steve here, Cars with Steve, and before we get started, I want to give Pickering Jeep a huge shout out and thanks for giving me access to this vehicle to shoot the video for you guys today. You can find their contact information in the description of the video. You can also find the build link for this specific vehicle down in the description on top of that. But unpacking this thing, it is phenomenal. I did mention it's available either front wheel drive or 4x4 and this specific one, it's the Trailhawk Elite, which in Canada is the highest available trim level. The States, your highest available is technically the high altitude. Slight differences between the two models. One of the big ones with the Trailhawk, Trailhawk Elite, we've got front tow hooks, which we'll get to in just a second. But starting off along the outside here, looking at the wheels, we've got a few different options available. So the rims in this thing, really nice. We're gonna find tire sizes ranging. So we've got 16s, 17s, 18s, or 19s, depending on which trim level of the vehicle that you've gone for. We're in the Trailhawk Elite. So it's gonna be a 17 inch tire as an option. We've got some nice rocker moldings there. We've got our trail rated four x four badge along the side, as well as our compass badge along the driver's side door on top of that, actually driver and passenger side door. Now, this thing is fairly loaded with technology. It's kind of crazy. We've got our side view mounted cameras, our front facing camera and a backup camera. So this thing has the option for a full 360 monitor, which is fantastic. Really useful if you're gonna be taking this thing off road because we can see what's going on on the trail in front of us. We can engage that 360 camera on top of that for parking spaces if things are a little bit tight as well, which is great. But great Jeep styling. We've got this Jeep logo right along the front. Beautiful look right along the front part of the grill there. And because we're in the Trail Hockey Elite, we've got two front tow hooks and a tow hook in the rear on top of that. So you get stuck, you need to help somebody out. You've got that flexibility, which is fantastic. Now we also do have our fog lamps, LED headlamps there on top of that. Another great thing about the compass certain trim levels is that you might also have skid plates. It's one of the benefits of getting more of these off-road capable models, but it's going to protect the underside of the vehicle. So if you know you're gonna be taking this thing on basic trails and things like that, you'd have that flexibility. On the inside, we've got our four low mode. We've got a four x four lock as well, which is fantastic. And then because we're in the four x four, we also have a series of selectable drive modes like rock crawl, which really useful if you're gonna be doing some basic off-roading. Now, if you're doing a little bit more aggressive, you could look at something like the Wrangler instead, which is gonna have a little bit more clearance than what you're looking at in the Compass. But this thing, for the size, for the price, it still is fairly capable. Getting underneath the hood of the Compass, very straightforward, just by our pedals, right next to the OBD2 port. So we've got our little release there. Now, before we do, one other thing to point out, right along the hood, I love it. We've got our Trailhawk badge right along the right side. So it's the driver's side. It looks really sharp. But getting underneath, we're just going to lift our hand up and right in between the two E's and Jeep, we just flip off to the left. Nice light hood, which is fantastic, but not on hydraulics, just a regular prop bar there. And up she goes. Now, the Jeep Compass only does have one engine choice that's available. And that's this, the 2.4 liter multi-air i4. Power-wise, it's on par with some other vehicles in the same size. So it's 177 horsepower and 172 pound-feet of torque. If you're looking for something a little bit more powerful, you could always look at the Cherokee or the Grand Cherokee as an option instead. But for an engine this size, it still does give you a good amount of power. And I did mention it, good fuel economy all at the same time. But overall, underneath the hood, this is great. Now, we do have two different options available when it comes down to the transmission. So it's either gonna be a six or a nine speed. That's gonna depend on if you're front wheel drive or if you go with the four x four. Front wheel drive, we're looking at that six speed. When we get into the four x four, that's when you get the nine speed automatic transmission instead. But they do perform fairly similarly across the board though. That if you're mechanically inclined doing some things yourself, we can easily check change our oil and then easily top up our fluids along the right hand side there. 
And then we do have this nice engine cover right there, 2.4 liter multi-air, which looks fairly sharp. And we've got our heat shield over top too, which is really nice. Now, one thing, I've been stressing it in a few of my videos, and that's maintaining your vehicle. I don't just mean doing oil changes, but regularly scheduled maintenance on top of that. So when you buy a vehicle, you want to make sure that you're maintaining it, whether it's used or new. And the reason why, if it's a new vehicle especially, is you want to make sure you're maintaining your manufacturer's warranty. So just make sure you're taking it in for regular oil changes, regularly scheduled maintenance as well, because that's how you're going to get the most life out of your vehicle, is by regularly maintaining it. But, like I said, overall styling, feature-wise, this thing's pretty nice. Taking a peek at along our driver's side here, we've got heated side view mirrors with a little blind spot system. On the door itself, we've got a little button here. And this is useful because if we've got our fob on us, we can press here to lock, and then we can also slide our hand in order to be able to unlock. But look at the interior basics. Really nice, but some highlights. We've got this nice red stitching all throughout the door there. Follows throughout the door, part of the dash, the wheel, the seats, etc. We've also got our base seat memory buttons there, as well as our side view memory button. We can control what's going on with our side view mirrors, our base window up and down buttons. We've also got a little storage area there, and then our bottle holder down below. Moving inside, so we do have our Alpine audio badge, because this one has the upgraded sound system. Off to the side here, depending on the trim level of the vehicle that you're in, that's going to dictate which buttons you have here. But power seats are available as an option, so we can go forwards, backwards, up and down. We can adjust our backrest, and then we've got two-way lumbar support on top of that. Moving along the inside here, nice looking pedals, but you can see there we do have our hood release. So if we ever need to get under the hood, all we're going to do right next to our OBD2 reader, we're just going to give that a pull. Moving up a little bit, we've got a series of other buttons here. So these ones, going to figure out what's going on with our running lamps. I honestly always just recommend keeping it in the auto setting there. Off to the side a bit more, what's going on with our instrument lighting on the inside? We do have a manual telescoping steering wheel on top of that. Oh, I love it. <laughs> this is nice. The newly designed interior inside of this thing is really, really nice. Oh, I like it. I love that we've got the upgrade now to Uconnect 5 inside of this thing. It is phenomenal. But a few small highlights. Like I did point out all of the stitching throughout the dash. It looks fantastic. We actually have a little Easter egg on the windshield as well, like an old school style Jeep up there, which is kind of cool. This is really nice, but we've got all these beautiful highlights throughout. And like the leather inside of this thing, it's almost like it's like a carbon fiber leather. It is a really, really neat feel, like a weave texture, I guess is what we're calling it, but it's really nice. Oh, I love it. No, the seats inside of this thing are really, really comfortable. Spacing wise, so I'm six feet tall with the seat as far down as it's going to go. I've got a little over three inches of head space here. So plenty of space, which is great. So you're like six, four, six, five. You'll probably comfortably be able to sit inside of this thing. Back I go. <laughs> this is so nice. How far back is this thing going? This is like a fully reclined seat. Oh my God. This thing is still going. That's amazing. Nap time. <laughs> That's great. So we've got multi-way adjustable seats. Might be manual, might be power, just depending on the trim level of the vehicle that you're in. And that's the same way with the material too. So might be a synthetic leather, might be true leather, might be cloth, depending on the trim level of the vehicle you've got. It's comfortable though. So same thing with the passenger side for the way that it's adjusted. Might be manual or power, just depending on the packages that you've added on. Next up, taking a peek at the steering wheel as well as the cluster screen of the Jeep Compass. So this is going to be a full walkthrough going through all of the different buttons, sticks, and things like that. So starting off, might have a heated steering wheel, might not, just depending on which trim level of the vehicle you've gone for. If you do have a heated steering wheel, we've got a button right on the inside of the media screen there. So we can see there, we've got all of our different climate control settings. We've got our heated steering wheel button that we can toggle on or off there as well, which is fantastic. But 
heated all the way around and the wheel itself feels great. We've got all of these nice metallic highlights throughout. Now one thing, steering wheel is going to be a manual telescoping. So just by our left knee there, we've got a little release. Move it in, out, up and down as necessary. And then click it, lock it back into place. But let's go through all the different buttons and sticks and things like that. Starting off, stick on the left hand side. We can flash our high beams out, use our turn signals, etc. On the right hand side, we also do have our controls for our front as well as for our rear windshield wipers. So we can easily adjust there pull in towards us to get that front windshield wiper fluid going and then we're going to push away in order to get our rear windshield wiper fluid going so very straightforward along the left hand side that's going to let us control what's going on with the media with the cluster screen well as the right hand side is going to let us figure out what's going on with our cruise control so the buttons that you're going to see here are going to depend on the packages you have because if you don't have the adaptive cruise this will just be your regular cruise control instead but the adaptive is great because all we do is we just turn it on there you can see our adaptive cruise control is ready and then we can either increase or decrease one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time once we get to our cruising speed and then go up and down toggle the system on off as necessary this is a distance indicator so how close you can see it kind of appearing on a few different screens there so along the very bottom right side and then when we go full screen we can also kind of see it there too before it just kind of hides away again so it is nice that we've got that as an option but one cool thing is that we can also press the ok button here in order to go to a different view instead. So we've got some different options there, but you can see there our cruise system works the same way. It's just that it's gonna look slightly different when we're in the digital versus, well, I guess fully digital regardless, but if we want that traditional analog look instead. We'll get to how that works in a sec, but basics of our cruise control system there. So we can either figure out how close or far we're gonna be away from the vehicle that's in front of us, we've got our highway drive assist too. And what that's going to do is, as long as it recognizes the lane markings, it's going to keep us nice and balanced in our lane as we go. So it's not fully self-driving, but it's pretty dang close all at the same time. We can also hit resume. So very straightforward to use, but if you wanna walk through on how to actually use the adaptive cruise system, check down in the description below. I've put together a comprehensive video there. So really straightforward there. Along the left-hand side is going to be for a few things. So. First one there is going to be the either answer or hang up on a phone call. We can also press this button if we want to get our Jeep's assistant listening. So our Uconnect system, we can do answer. things <laughs> we can do things like navigate using our voice, we can change songs, radio stations, and so many other things. But if we push that button, it's cool because it gives us a list of everything for the most part that we're able to do inside of this vehicle. Like we can change the climate, media, and a few other things on top of that, which answer. is fantastic. I, I love it. Now, we also can, I did mention, answer or hang up on a phone call. This button is an interesting one too, because if we're hooked up through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, we can also do a longer press and hold if we want to activate our Google or our Siri Assistant. Now, the buttons here are gonna let us figure out what's going on with that cluster screen as well. So we've got a series of options available. We can change it out for this view. Pressing and holding okay gets us out to more of like a digital view instead. So as we give it a little bit of gas there, we can also press OK to change between miles and kilometers per hour or two, which is very simple. And then if we wanted to, we push this button in order to switch out to a different style view again. So quite a few different views that are available and we can kind of jump up and down between different options there. So you can see trip A, B counter. We've got our current range. We've got all of our different temperatures and things like that, which is kind of neat. Moving to the side, we also do have what's going on with our cruise control, current speed up and down here is gonna do nothing because this is for our radio. So we can't do anything there. We actually have to adjust what station we're using. Look at this. So along the left side, we've got a series of different buttons. We've got some on the right side too. But buttons along the left hand side, let us change between what's going on with our station. So we can push up in order to see between different stations. We can do a press and hold to seek out that way too. Or we can press this way if we wanna change between our active presets. So it's a really, really useful setting. So little button there is for our presets. Up and down is essentially going to let us seek out to different stations. And then we go the opposite side. And then on this side, we've got a few other buttons here. This one is going to be for our volume. So volume up and down. That looks too much longer. He said he wanted to... So we can easily go up and down with our volume there. And then we can push this button if we want to change out between all of our different sources really useful but i love that jeep vehicles have that you're going to find that in chrysler dodge and jeep vehicles but it's brilliant pressing this button again brings us back to this like multi-stage view 
we can hop inside and see what's going on. So we're in auto mode right now, but as we shift between different modes, so we've got different modes that are kind of popping up and down there. And let's drop back down to our auto mode. So auto mode, honestly, is where you're gonna to wanna to stay most of the time. But as you can see there, it's gonna automatically adapt to road conditions versus locking it out into one of these other modes instead. And then we simply just push there to get back to this main screen again. And then we can go up and down between different subscreens. So what I'm gonna do is switch back to the analog view for a second here. And you can realistically get to any of these options, whether we're in the analog versus the digital there, but it is, so neat that we've got that as an option. So we can kind of go left and right in between these screens to get to different options there as well. Moving down, you can see that we're going up and down between other screens. So all I'm gonna do is use the directional pad here. So I'm gonna zoom you in so you can see exactly what's going on as we go. So let's focus you in, there we go. So we've got our range there, so what's going on. Moving down, we've also got our trip information with two individual counters. So you can see along the very bottom there, we've got little subscreens, and that's pretty much the same way across the board. So we've got our vehicle info. We've also got what's going on with our coolant, temp, transmission temperature, and a number of other things. So our essential gauge summary. We've got what's going on with our current tire pressure. We've also got our start-stop system, which we it's not gonna use it because our vehicle's currently heating or cooling. So we could toggle the system off by pushing the button here if we wanted to. And as you can see there, start-stop is off. So very, very straightforward to do that. Moving down, we've got our trip information. So two individual counters. We can just press and hold the OK button on the steering wheel if we wanted to be able to reset the counters that way. Moving down, we've got our off-road status. We've got our current audio that we're listening to. Messages, if there was any sort of messages, updates, and things like that for the vehicle. And then we've also got our setup. So we just hit OK. And then as you can see there, we can also adjust what's going on with individual parts. So it kind of highlights very, very lightly as we go. But so we're going to see there. So we've got upper left. So if we click on that, we can have it show our compass, our temperature, time, range to empty and a few other things. So we can essentially make this not whatever we'd like to, but we've got the flexibility of at least giving ourselves some options to be able to customize this a little bit. So if you wanna be able to show, hide certain things, you want slightly different options there, you do have that as available as an option. We can select what menus are showing up, what defaults are there, we can also cancel. So if we've done too much to it, we've got the flexibility of essentially like resetting it and bringing it back to a factory default instead. But it is really neat. Now, as we go back to a different view, so we go back to this multi-page view, it's the same idea. I did mention we can kind of scroll up and down to go between all of our different counters, all of these different options here. We can switch out here in order to go back to all of these different views. So we can kind of get to all of these different views and options and things like that in different ways. Now, one thing, if we had navigation going, so we could go there if we wanted to, or navigate to Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons. <laughs> this is everything I found. Which do you want? Tim Hortons, 742 Kingston Road, Pickering. I Ontario. love the way that it you says Tim one? Hortons. Hilarious. Okay. And once we've got our route selected, just hopping back, we hit drive. At the end of the road, turn Boom. Right, Kingston Road. As you can see there, we've got our route coming up right through the cluster screen as well, which is fantastic. I love it. And then once we hit end route there, end route yes, it's just going to get rid of that map instead. So it's really, well, our directions I should say, but it's really nice that we've got that available as an option. It's really nice. We've got this beautiful digital cluster screen, amazing multimedia screen too. And like the way that it looks is great. Like it's up there. It just, it's nicely put into the vehicle. Like it, ah. It's interesting because I'm, I'm kind of torn on these like phablet style screens sometimes because it looks like it's just kind of glued in place there. But the way that this one is, the kind of angle that it's got, it does look really nice. So this one does obviously have factory navigation available there. We can kind of see the map, but which way you go is going to depend on which model of the vehicle you're in or which trim level and which packages you've added on. But this larger media screen is phenomenal. So I'm gonna go through, teach you everything you need to know about what's, what's going on at this screen because it's pretty neat. 
So starting off along the very top, we can see what's going on with our temperature there. So we could adjust the driver passenger side there very easily, just kind of doing a press and hold if we want to. We can sync it out. So let's say if we're down here, so down the screen, we've adjusted the passenger side a little bit different. We go here, we sync, it's gonna, it's gonna default the passenger to whatever the driver's side setup is. We can easily adjust our ventilated or heated first row seats, our heated steering wheel, Along the passenger side, same idea. We can adjust what's going on with our heated, ventilated first row seats if we've got these available as an option. So that's a recurring theme. The buttons that are gonna be here will depend on which model of the vehicle that you're in and which features you have. We've got this little icon, and that's gonna be for individual profiles. So really useful because if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle, we can link things, so this is kinda of neat. We link things like our phone, navigation favorites, and things like that. So if you've got multiple people driving, you can link off everything and then switch profiles so that you don't have to constantly reset profiles and presets and comfort levels and things like that. It's gonna remember your own personal settings, which is amazing. We can edit out all of these different things. So we can even, oh, that's cool. Edit out our avatar if we wanna change the look. We can change out our welcome pop-up. We can delete profiles and a few other things, which is fantastic. So it's all done through our little My Profile there, which we can also access through the app screen along the very bottom. Along the top there, we can see if there's any notifications that are available for the vehicle. We can see if we're currently connected to Wi-Fi, figure out what's going on with our outside temperature, We've got our current time as well. And then you saw there, so we pushed that little bar. Oh, and when we did, it gave us a little drop down with our surround view camera, so our full 360 cam. We'll get to that one in a bit. Pull back down, we've got our temperature, profiles, notifications, passenger voice, Wi-Fi hotspot, and a few other things. Then we can also adjust our clock settings if we want to that way instead. We can figure out what we're currently connected to for media. And as you can see there, as we press any of these buttons, it's gonna launch us into different pages. And that's one cool thing about Jeep because you're gonna notice a few of the same settings across different places of the vehicle, which we'll get to as we navigate through. But we've got our home screen here. We can pop out to go full screen navigation, back home, and then one really cool thing, we can adjust our pages here. So we go My Pages, we can add pages, delete pages, and reorder. So if we wanna add in a unique page with different things, we've got the flexibility to be able to do that. So we can add in different widgets. So if we wanted to add in things like our climate settings, favorite, and a number of other things, we'd have that flexibility. And then we go back home, we can now swipe between active pages that we've created too, which is amazing. We've got what's going on with our current audio, but then another great thing, so we've got all of our different pages, we can also take these buttons, we can do a press and hold, and we can also drag it around to a different spot. So if you wanted to have media comfort in different positions, you've got that flexibility, which is amazing. But let's dive through all of these different settings now. So we've got our media icon there, and when we do that, we've got our sources. So we've got FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, if we had a USB stick with MP3s, that would be an available option. We've got our AM radio on top of that, and we can adjust between different sources along the side there too, which is great. Jump back into sources along the very top. We, you saw there, we jump into playing. We can adjust out this way. We can change out stations this way. We can also type in a station that way if we want to and hit go if we want to tune out. So there are so many different ways we can do it. And you can see there, in order to be able to save a preset, once you've tuned to whatever station you wanna save, you're just gonna press and hold, and it can be on any of the available spots, and it's going to give you your preset there, so it's saving it in. We can hit all presets to see all of our available presets that we've saved. We can adjust number of presets that are available to show there on top of that, which is fantastic. So if you're a heavy audiophile, you can see there a mix of AM, FM, Sirius XM, et cetera. So you've got a ton of options that are available. And then we can just hide that again. We can button press there in order to be able to get to all of our different sources that way too. When we jump into Sirius XM though, we've got some other options. So we've got our related content, we can see what's going on with our profiles. So we can, well, obviously right now we're in a demo, but you've got your flexibility of being able to log in. You can look at Artist Radio too. We've got our favorites, listening history, and all of our different settings, specifically for Sirius XM. So we can block out explicit content, reset all of our history, and things like that. So if you're a really heavy Sirius XM user, listener, it's useful to know that we've got all this available as an option. 
If you've got an Active, uh, active Series XM subscription, we can log in and set up. We can also manage our settings, call up Sirius XM for them to transfer the system over instead. So really straightforward to use this. And I mean, we got to do this. So the audio, amazing song, but the sound inside of it is great because this one has the upgraded Alpine audio system. So we've got some different options there. But I did mention we've got all of our different sources that we can play with. We've got browse and that's kind of neat because it lets us know what stations are available, which is straightforward when we get into Sirius XM. But if we look at AM FM and go to browse, it's got every station that's available around where we are. So if you're new to an area, you're not really sure what you can listen to, we can go there and then we can look at all stations that are available, which is amazing. We've got all of our audio settings along the very top, so we can figure out what's going on with our balance and fade. We can look at our equalizer to adjust what's going on with, let's base it out a little bit and let's drop the treble, adjust our audio settings there. The reason why I did this, generally cranking the bass a bit, dropping the treble is gonna give you pretty good audio. We've got our speed adjusted volume. So as we go faster or slower, it's automatically going to adjust what's going on with our audio. We've got surround sound instead. So if you want like more of an immersive experience, we've got our autoplay setting there. So when we plug in a USB stick, do we want auto automatically playing? Same thing on the radio. So do we want the radio automatically to turn on when the vehicle's turned on? Yes, no, we can recall the last station, etc. Do we want to turn the radio off when the door is open? Yes or no? volume adjustment. This is really cool because oh, we've got our volume adjustment, which is great because we can adjust the volume for our media, for phone, for navigation, and for our voice and things like that. So if you wanted to have navigation volume low, high, whatever the case, oh, <laughs> high or low, whatever the case may be, we'd have the flexibility to do it. And that's going to be all for our audio settings. So very straightforward there. Next up, so we can go back to our main audio there or jump into different presets if we wanted to. And I did mention we can go to all presets if we wanted to go that route and then hiding again. Next up is our comfort setting. So comfort, crazy climate control settings available here. So we could, if we want to, adjust our driver passenger side. We can have it going, oh, we can have it going to our windshield, face, feet, some sort of combination of all the above. We've got our driver side settings. So do we want our heated or do we want our ventilated seats going for the driver or for the passenger side? Do we, want it our, do we want our heated steering wheel going? Yes or no. Max AC, air conditioner, et cetera. And then as we adjust any of, oh, dang. As we adjust any of our settings using the climate controls down the center stack, as you saw there, that's automatically going to adjust what's going on in this screen too. So great settings that are available. I did mention we've got our base sync button there too, or we can just let the vehicle determine what the temperature should be on the inside here. Moving into our factory navigation. So we've got a few different ways that we can search for an address. We could search this way if we wanna go old school. We could, oh, that's actually a neat one. We can enter in a home or work address. And one of the benefits there is we can say navigate to home, navigate to work, whatever the case may be, and it's gonna automatically jump that way. We can look at parking, we can look at gas stations, any point of interest icons for restaurants and things like that. We'd have that flexibility. We can just do a generic search again if we want to. Pressing this little button gives us all of our different point of interest icons, or we can browse all of the available categories. And oh my gosh, there are so many categories available here, which is kind of crazy. Wow. So we can search that way. We can search by GPS coordinates, or we can press the voice command prompt and we'd be able to navigate this way instead. So we can say, let's go home. Let's go Canceled. different point of interest icons. I'm Canadian. Navigate to Tim Hortons. Mortons. Mortons? No, this I don't want to go. Everything I found. <laughs> I guess we're going to Mortons in Toronto. It's a steakhouse. I think that's amazing. That's so we've got the option of being able to navigate using our voice instead. Just be sure you're very clear when you're talking, but it's cool that we've got that as an option there, which is nice. Actually, let's try that again. Navigate to Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons. Perfect. You're this is everything I found. attempting, but <laughs> we've at least got it there. Tim Hortons, Perfect. Kingston Road, Pickering, so you can Ontario. see there, we Want could there. zoom in and out this way. A very responsive screen, which is fantastic. Canceled. Let's cancel out for a second there. And it's got our route going. So we could, if we want to, jump back there. 
and then we've got a few points. So we can use it as a starting point if we're going to different places. We can hit this button as well to be able to hide or show, add to favorites, or we just hit drive. And we've got our main route there. If there were other routes available, it would give us different options, but strictly the single route. So we hit drive, and this is how we make it happen. We can find gas stations as well. We can exit out. We can change out the direction of the type of map that we've got there. We can also have alerts only. We can mute, go back to all options, or just end route. Yes. And the route's cancelled out. So very, very straightforward being able to use all of these different options here, which is fantastic. And I did mention we could look at our favorites. We can view all of our recent destinations there as well. So wherever we've gone, we can hit delete, select, delete. And as you see there, deleting all of our different options there too, which is really, really straightforward. We can push this button now if we want to get to some other options. So do we want to search? Do we want to add in our work home addresses? Look at recents? Do we want to go to different trips? So if we're creating like multi-stage trips, we can look at our maps there as well. So for different options, we can download different maps or we can look at some different settings. So when we, oh, wrong button or we can look at some different settings. So we can show different things. So our traffic flow, if we wanna show our traffic, our arrival time and distance. So if we've got an up, well, if we're going to a different address, do we wanna have it showing our remaining distance, how much time it's gonna take or both? Do we wanna show the arrival information for our final destination or our next stop if we've got multiple steps for our, ste or for our destination? Do we wanna hide the sidebar when we look at our map? From different point of interest icons? Do we want to show different things on our route, on our map, etc.? We can look at settings for our map view. Do we want to have the map auto zoom? So as we get closer to our destination, are we going to zoom in and out? What type of orientation do we want? So we've saw our 3D, 2D, etc. Different routing options that are available. So do we want the fastest, the shortest, or the most eco-friendly route? Do we want to avoid things like toll roads, carpool lanes, unpaved roads, tunnels, and so many other things? Do we want to send our destination to our phone when our phone's connected? Do we want it to automatically, oh, that's a cool one. Do we want it to automatically reroute as well? So if it recognizes that a faster route's available, it would give us the option to be able to do that automatically or manually. Different sounds and alerts. Do we want to have our vehicle read out different things out loud? So we can, this is so cool. We can literally have it read out individual things for cameras. If there's an upcoming red light camera for different safety warnings, do we want it to tell us when we're speeding? <sighs> when there's a traffic jam ahead and what type of alert do we want for all of these options? And then some other settings that are available, privacy, and then our basic about. So a lot of information there, but I mean, that's how you use factory navigation inside of this thing. Next up, adding in a phone is also very straightforward. So you see there, we don't have any devices that are currently connected. So no items, we can look at our device manager here, we can add a device, do not disturb, and we can also activate two phones if we want to. So no device connected, so let's start off and actually connect a device. So we're gonna go add device, and we want to search for, we're looking for Uconnect there, so we're gonna go Bluetooth, and that's already showing up, so let's connect. Hey, do we want to connect up? The pin number is matched, so that's good. So we're going to pair and yes. Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to hit no for now, but I mean, you saw that a few seconds and we're connected there, which is amazing. Now it's also saying, do we want to allow CarPlay? Because Uconnect 5 supports wireless CarPlay, which is amazing. So do we want to use CarPlay with this vehicle? Yes, we're going to use it. Okay, let's connect. Okay. And it's going to be a second or two here and you can see there carplay and we are fully connected there so really straightforward but i love the way that it looks on this screen it's phenomenal so we've got google maps that are there we can swipe across if we want to we can we've got apple maps we've got google maps we've got Waze. we can use any of these map applications right through this middle screen we can easily adjust there we can't pinch to zoom on apple carplay but we can adjust this way to zoom in out as necessary there if we want to really straightforward done once we're finished up there we can search for addresses look at our favorites we can navigate this way we can do a long press and hold on the steering wheel to activate our, our siri assistant as well which is fantastic we can push this button to go back to our uconnect phone or hop out of carplay if we want to if we've done that we can push there to jump back in 
push this button in order to go back to our sub screen or here to go back to the main screen instead. So we've got whatever map application we've launched last showing up. We can see what current time it is, what, what we've got for signal, battery, and a few other things. We've got our podcast there. And then as we swipe across, we've got, as I mentioned, maps, podcasts. Certain apps will work through the screen, other ones won't. Now, one nice thing is that through our phone, we can just go general settings. And then from there, we can go CarPlay. We just find the vehicle. We can forget the car, we can disable CarPlay, or we can customize. So if we launch back into Car, oh, launch back into CarPlay rather than disabling it. So let's hop into CarPlay there, swipe across. If we want to adjust things, like let's say if you love listening to your podcasts and your audiobooks, you'd have that flexibility. If you've accidentally deleted something, it does remove it, but it adds it back here. We could just do a reset if we wanted to, and it's going to bring everything back to the factory default settings there instead. So you've got quite a few different options that are available here, but I mean, as you saw there, very simple to use. Whether you decide to go the podcast route, if you want to listen, browse, look at your library, whatever the case may be, we can launch our phone, go back to device manager if we want to. And then we can also select if we want to have it to going just to our phone, to audio, or CarPlay, which is going to give us all of the above. But very straightforward using an iPhone inside of this thing. Next up, connecting in Android is the exact same process. So if we weren't on this screen, let's say we were back here. Actually, I guess we're technically connected to CarPlay right now. So let's do something. Let's disable this for a second. Perfect. So we're not connected. And now if we want to, we can add a device in. So we just go add device and we're just going to search for our Android device or for our device. So we're just going to search you connect there. Pins match up. So yes and OK. Bluetooth pairing. So allow access to contacts. I'm going to say no for now and messages. Same idea, but we're connected there and as you can see there. So favorite phones have connection priorities. So do we want to make it the favorite? Yes or no. I'm going to say no for now. And then do I want to connect to Android Auto? Yes or no. I'm going to hit OK. So yes, we're going to connect. And as you can see there, it's got a little bar. It's connecting now and three, two, one. So we need to finish connecting on our car. So let's continue. I think that's really it. It's just, it's that, it's that, and we're there, and we are fully connected, which is amazing. So we've got that available as an option. We've got our settings, traffic, route options. So if we want to avoid things like motorways, toll roads, ferries, things like that, you can see what's going on with our podcasts. We've got our music notifications. We've got our Google Assistant that we can activate that way. We can also just press and hold on the steering wheel there if we want to activate it that way. We push this little button and that brings us to our Android Auto home screen. So one thing, this phone does have both Google Maps and Waze installed, but I mean, as you see there, it doesn't give us the flexibility of being able to use Waze inside of this vehicle, unfortunately. But very similar to the iPhone side of things, on our phone, if we search for Android Auto, we can go to settings. And when we go through settings, we can look at our connection help, previously connected cars. We can customize our launcher, disable wireless CarPlay, and a few other things. So, wire, or sorry, wireless Android Auto, and a few other things. We can also, I did mention, customize the launcher. So if we want to customize things, we could. Very similar to what we saw the Apple side of things, we just kind of press and hold. And then, oh, helps if I accidentally actually press and hold. And we can kind of like adjust it up and down this way. But one thing to take into account, so any changes we make, we actually have to close down Android Auto and then reconnect in order for any changes to take into effect. So it's not dynamic the same way it was on the Apple side of things. But I mean, you saw there easy enough. We can launch back into our phone or the device manager again. And as you see there, we've got both phones connected. So if I go back to the one phone here, we can also make it a favorite. So it's essentially if both phones are in the vehicle, who's going to get connection priority first? We can enable the phone, Bluetooth, disable Android Auto, whatever the case may be. We can go to a charge only mode. We can delete the device and things like that. So if you've got multiple phones connected, we can say this is now the favorite. And you can see there it's now got connection priority. But one even cooler thing is that if we've got multiple phones connected, so we're going to end our Android Auto session. We can have one phone connected for our phone, one phone connected for our audio. Really useful. So if you want to connect your phone without actually connecting to the phone for making phone call or to the vehicle for phone calls, we'd have that flexibility. So we can go one or the other, some sort of Frankenstein combination for these four. We can obviously only connect to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay separately though. So we do have that flexibility, which is great. We can have two active phones. We can go into do not disturb mode or we go to the bottom, delete device, yes. 
there. Bottom, delete device, yes. So I mean, as you saw there, super straightforward being able to add delete phones from this vehicle. Next up is the actual vehicle settings. So we've got our surround camera now. So as you can see there, full 360 view. We've got our top view and our rear view. We can move out so that it's strictly a rear view, strictly a front view, our front split view, which is really useful. So a little bit of a start comparison. We've got our back 360 or our front 360. So if we're going through a trail, we wanna see what's going on there, we could. Or we can just look at our backup camera there view instead. So we've got quite a few different options that are available there and just exit out of that or hop into strictly our rear, our rear view camera instead. From there, we've got a series of different settings available. So different options for our display. So do we want either Spanish, English, Italian, or French as our primary language? For our display mode, do we want to have it auto or for manual adjust? And that's going to be for our brightness and things like that. So you can see there when we're in auto mode, some of these things are disabled and that's because it's automatically doing it. We can set different themes as well. So if we want a different style theme, See there, loading out, and it's going to give us a slightly different look. So it's really going to be a matter of personal preference. You can see some basic layouts and color changes and things like that as we move between different themes. So it's going to be a matter of preference which one you go with. Moving back, we've got our units. So do we want to have our distance in kilometers? Do we want barometers, PSI, Celsius, Fahrenheit? What type of fuel consumption settings do we want there as well? We've got our touchscreen beep. Do we want that happening? Yes or no? We've got all of our different labels, turn by turn directions, right inside of the cluster screen. Do we want that showing, yes or no? We've got different options for our profile. So for your own unique profile, what language do you want? What display mode do you want? Units and things like that. So again, if you've got multiple user profiles, it's really cool that we've got so many different settings for your own unique profile. So it's gonna save it in to your own profile, which is amazing. So you can move up and down between all of these different settings if you wanna have it create your own unique profile with all of these different options. Do you prefer a male or female voice for 12 or 24 hour mode? Which options do you want? And that's specific to your own profile. For driver assistance settings, we've got things like emergency braking. So if the vehicle senses a potential forward collision, is it going to give us a warning and brake? Is it just gonna warn us or will it do nothing? Oh, uh, so that's on this one. Let's get it to do both. For our sensitivity, do we wanna have it for, essentially for the braking, when will that happen? Do we wanna have to have a close sensitivity, medium or far away? If it recognizes a pedestrian, do we want it actively braking for us as well? We've got our driving assist. So do we want a steering wheel vibration? And that's useful because if we start to veer over into a lane without signaling, we're gonna get a little bit of a steering wheel shake, almost as if we're running over rumble pavement. We've got our lane management. So we've got a few different options there. So do we wanna get a vibration? Do we want it to give our steering assist so it's gonna gently nudge us back into our lane or do we want it to do both? So if we start to veer over into a lane without signaling, vibrate and it's gonna nudge us back into our lane. For lane warning, do we want it to give it the same idea, early, medium, or late warning? Do we want a low, medium, or high vibration strength? And then same idea with our steering assist. So when it nudges us back into our lane, do we want it to be a low, medium, or a high nudge? Our traffic signal sign assist there as well, do we want to toggle that on or off? Our traffic sign warning, do we want to have? So it's more or less letting us know if there's different traffic signs coming up. Speed sign, if those change, do we want to get notifications? And then what's going on with our blind spot system? So that's going to, that's going to let us know if a car has entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. From there, we've got our clock and date. So do we want to have it automatically adjust based off of our GPS location? For format, do we want 12 or 24 hour mode? Do we want to show our time status in our bar there as well? Yes, no. And do we want to set the date? Now, obviously these things are disabled because we're in auto mode. So if we go into anything but auto mode, it gives us the flexibility of being able to adjust these things out. Moving down, phone and Bluetooth. We've already seen all of our device manager settings there. We've got our do not disturb and enable active two phones. Our voice, do we want a male or female? Do we want to be able to listen to a wake up word? So we say, hey, you connect. Tune to 94.9 FM. So it's really cool. So you see there, it changes stations out for us very simply. We can use that wake word. We've got our barge, our, com our command list is an interesting one. So this is the command list. So whether or not that one shows up is gonna be a matter of preference. I honestly, when you first get the Jeep, it's probably a good idea to keep this one enabled for a bit until you at least realize what all the different settings and options are. 
from there, series of other options. We've got our options for navigation, which we've already seen all of these things when we were looking through the navigation there. Different options for camera, so our surround camera delay. So as we go to drive forward, the camera will stay on for a few seconds. And then do we wanna show our guidelines there as well? So if we're in our surround, these are gonna be the guidelines. So whether or not that one shows up, gonna be a matter of preference there. Mirrors and wipers, do we want it to be rain sensing? Our lights for headlight sensitivity, our delay when we go to lock the vehicle, how long do we want our headlamps staying on for before they turn off? Do we want it just auto turning off? Do we want our outside lights? Do we want it to auto dim our high beams? So if it recognizes an oncoming vehicle, automatically gonna dim the beams for us. Do we want our lights cornering there for us as well? And then do we want our lights flashing when we go to lock the vehicle? Our brakes, do we wanna automatically have it turn our parking brake on when we stop the vehicle, throw it into park? And then brake service. So do we need brake service done? We've got our doors and locks. So do we want things auto unlocking? Do we wanna flash our lights with our lock? Do we wanna sound our horn when we lock the vehicle? Do we wanna sound the horn when we remote start? How many, do we wanna look at passive entry? So we don't need to have the, we've got our key fob on us, but we don't need to unlock in order to get inside. That's a really useful feature. Do we wanna have our settings linked to our individual key fob? And then do we wanna enable or disable our hands-free lift gate? Seats in comfort. So do we want all of our heated seats and steering wheel and things like that coming on automatically with remote start on all starts? Or do we just want it off so we can adjust it ourselves? We've got our key off options. So same idea, headlight delay. We've seen that in a few other options. Our radio delay. So when we go to turn the vehicle off, do we want the radio to just be off? Or do we want it to give it 20 minutes before it turns off automatically? Some different audio settings, which we've already seen. Notifications. Do we want all of these different notifications showing up? Sirius XM. Do we want to block explicit content? Adjust our profile. Looking at software updates, do we want to download them automatically over Wi-Fi? Yes, and you want to make sure you're connected to a Wi-Fi network at home, as you can see there. Make sure you're connected to a Wi-Fi network at home because it's automatically going to download the system update and install it for you. What's our current system information? And then reset. So we can reset our radio if that's giving us issues. We can reset our personal data. We can reset factory, or we can essentially go factory reset. So if you're selling your vehicle, just bring it back to our factory defaults instead. So I know a lot of information, but there are so many things to know. One other thing would be our app screen, and that's essentially going to be, so either favorites, recent that we've used, categories, or all. So pretty much every service that's available inside the vehicle to a degree. So it is kind of neat though. So if we wanted like a hot button press to get into our driver ventilated seat and our heated steering wheel, we would now be able to do that because it's added to our favorites. So we can just go to favorites now, and as you can see there, we've got our heated wheel and a few other options that are available here. So it's kind of neat. We've got that available as an option. So we hit our wheel, etc. So it is kind of nice. Like I said, our app screen is essentially going to be a summary. We can remove things if we want to. And then we can press the, if we want to get into our Alexa controls, if we want to get into our device manager and things like that. And we can star any of these things out if we'd like to, having it showing up on our favorite screen there instead. We do have our auto start stop button. So that's the one that's going to kill power to the engine if we come to a complete stop. In some instances, we've got our traction control system, toggle that on or off. We've got our lane management system. So the one that's gonna nudge us back into our lane if we signal without, or if we veer over without signaling. And we've got our four way blinkers on top of that. So really nice glossy look there. But as we start to move down a little bit, and down we go, let's brighten you up a little bit. There we go. Oh yeah, there we go, that's better. All right, so a ton of different options that are available down here now. So we've got our volume rocker. Uh, amazing song, but the sound inside of this Alpine system is amazing. But we've got our audio there, we can turn it off, we can mute. We've got our tuning rocker there. We can turn the whole screen off if we want to. We've got a series of different climate control settings there. So you can see there are a ton of different options, adjust what's going on with our fan speed. Do we want to go into our windshield face feet, some sort of combination. We've got some controls here as well as through that media screen. Moving down, we've got two USB power points as well as a wireless charge pad. So if you've got a phone that supports wireless charging, we just drop our phone in and 
You can see there a little indicator light letting us know that we are now charging up. And it's really nice because we're pairing that with a wireless system on top of that. So wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, which is fantastic. We've got our Park Rivers Neutral Drive. We can hit the stick over to go into a manual mode. So that means that we've got the flexibility of being able to adjust what gear we're in as we go. So really useful if you want to rely more on engine braking instead. We've got our parking brake and we've got a series of different selectable drive modes. So auto mode is good for the majority of people most of the time. We've got snow mode, sand mode, and rock mode as well. One thing about rock mode is we do have to be in our four wheel drive low. So obviously useful if you're going into a rock, like rock crawling situation, if you're towing a boat and things like that. We've also got our hill descent control and then our four wheel drive lock, which useful for some circumstances too. So this thing really is meant more for that off-road lover, that person who wants to take this thing off-road, not going on crazy trails that would require something like the Jeep Wrangler, but you want to take it off base trails and things like that, this thing's got you covered. We've got the 4x4 system underneath the vehicle. We've got all of our skid plates on top of that, which is fantastic. We've got our four-wheel drive low mode, which means that if we want to take this thing off-road, we've got that flexibility. From there, we've got a few cup holders, a little armrest with a decent amount of space. Ooh. I got pretty deep in there, that's kind of cool. No power points in there, but there is a nice amount of space in that little armrest. Moving up overhead, we've got our auto dimming rear view mirror. Might be a manual dimming, but we've got our SOS mode and the flexibility to turn off that auto dimming capability too, which is fantastic. From there, we've got controls for our sunroof, our interior lights as well. Oh, that's neat. As well as our lift gate. So we can actually open the trunk door from the top here, which is kind of cool. But the roof, Really nice single button press, and this thing has the option for a full panoramic sunroof. Single button press opens this thing up halfway. Secondary button press opens it up the rest of the way, which is great. We could, nice, create like a little cross breeze so we can air it out if we want to. And then single button press, yeah, single button press to open it up all the way. Nice, opens up a little bit. Oh yeah, okay. So single button press opens it up most of the way. Secondary button press opens it up that teeny little bit more. It's kind of nice, but we've got that control there, which is great. Shifting over, we've got our home link system. So if you've got a garage door opener at home, we can easily program that in. We've got a little business card holder on the inside and the outside there. We've got a vanity mirror inside of our visor with lights built in. And this bad boy is extending out to block all of the sun, which is fantastic. Now, another thing to point out, we've got assist handles all over the place. So first row, second row on the driver and the passenger side, which is fantastic. But overall, like features styling wise, this is great. I love the new interior, what Jeep has done with this compass. It looks really, really sharp. Good job. <laughs> this is really cool. I got to figure out what's going on with that second row. So let's hop back there and see what space it's looking like. So the second row first impressions on this thing, it's nice. It's very, very comfortable all at the same time, which is fantastic. These seats though, really, really comfortable. Nice amount of cushion to them. One thing, the seats themselves are locked into place, so we can't slide them forwards, backwards. There's no option to recline them. But I mean, with the driver's seat set up for somebody who's six feet tall, I'm six feet tall. I've got a nice amount of knee space and a good amount of foot space, head space with me sitting fully upright. My head is like just touching the top here. So, I mean, six feet tall, six one, you'll probably be able to fit inside of this thing. If I kind of slouch a tiny little bit, gives me a nice amount of space though, which is good. But like I said, space and styling wise, this is really good. Now, could you fit three full size versions of me in the second row? It would be like a teeny little bit tight, not impossible. The big one would be this middle seat. So, I mean, <laughs> I can't really get my feet like up onto this overly comfortably. And if I was kind of like spreading, spread eagle, I feel like basic instinct right now. <laughs> but if I was spread a little bit, I would be able to fit. But again, getting two more versions of me side by side would be a teeny little bit tight. Not impossible, just a little bit tight. But it's interesting because with me now in the middle seat, sitting fully upright, I've got like maybe a quarter inch of headspace there. So a little bit of space, not too bad at the same time. But 
feature wise back here and styling is good. Like we've got all of the same base highlights we saw along the driver's side. So we're a nice glossy part of the door, a beautiful stitching that follows all the way throughout the seat too, which is great. It looks really nice. Now a few base highlights. We've got our assist handle over top. We've got a little clothing hook on both the driver and the passenger side. Behind the first row seats, we do have pockets on the driver passenger side in this trim. From there, we've got right in behind our armrest there, same glossy highlight that we saw along the door follows through. We've got some pretty cool features here. So we've got the option for second row heated seats. Strictly gonna be on the outboard, so on that driver passenger seat. Middle one's not gonna be heated, but we've got that as an option, which is fantastic. We've got a boatload of power points back here too. So we've got a USB, USB-C, a bit further down, we've got a regular wall outlet, so 150 watt, and then a traditional cigarette lighter adapter. So you need some power points, you've got more than enough of them in the second row, which is amazing. A few other things to point out, we do also have cup holders back here, which is fantastic because yeah, along the door, we've got some nice bottle holders, which is great, but you want some cup holders and you do have that available there as an option, which is fantastic. But like I said, the seat, it actually, it is, it's really, com not, not as comfortable as the first row seats, but the second row seats are actually really nice inside of this thing. I like it. And like I said, like space styling wise, it isn't bad. Like four full size versions of me, you won't have a problem fitting inside of this vehicle. If you've got a younger family as well, you are covered off because we've got all of our anchor points and tethers and things like that. So with all of the space here, front facing, rear facing child seats, you're not gonna have an issue inside of this thing whatsoever. Filling up fuel inside of the compass is straightforward. So we've got our non-locked system there, capless as well, just insert, fill up and you're good to go. Looking at recommended fuel, doesn't matter if you're in the front wheel drive, four by four, whatever the case may be, Minimum manufacturer's recommendation inside of the Compass is just your regular 87 octane. So regular fuel, all you need to use inside of this thing, which is fantastic. Looking at the back end of the Jeep Compass, I did mention we've got our rear tow hook there as well, which is great. And then we also do have our trailer tow package right from the factory with our four pin provision. So not the seven pins, strictly the four, but it is still nice that that's there. When we look at towing inside this vehicle, we're maxing out at 2000 pound towing capacity, which again, puts it in line with some other vehicles in this same class. Badge wise, we've got our four x four badge along the bottom left, Trailhawk badge along the bottom right, gonna be dependent on which version of the vehicle you've got. We've got our Jeep badge, we've got our standard backup camera, as well as our rear wiper. So a lot of good technology across the board here, which is great. Then one other cool thing, depending on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in and which packages you've added on, you might also have... Oh! <laughs> Foot activated power lift gate. I love these things, but let's flip around and take a look and see what's going on back here. The Compass actually does have quite a little bit of space for the cargo area, which is fantastic. And if you can see there, right along the very back, we also do have our tether points. So tether is there, which is great if you've got front facing, rear facing child seats. Folding the seats down, I can reach it easily. But if you can't reach it from the back, all we do, pop the door open. And we've got a little release there. So we're just going to pull that release, drop down. And as you can see, they're easy enough, but look at how much more that opens it up. And I mean, great amount of depth when we've got that second row folded down with a 60-40 bench. So 60 left, 40 right hand side. So we can create as much space as we need to back here, which is a nice thing. Now looking at some base features of the cargo area here, not too much to point out. Nothing on the right side with the exception of a little subwoofer there. Along the left-hand side, we've got our trunk button, so we can close the trunk back there if we want to. We've got a 12 volt power point on top of that. So not a ton of stuff, but we've at least got the basics. Now, I did mention lift gate might be power, might be manual, could be foot activated, depending on which trim level of the vehicle we're in. We've got our regular cloth liner there. We do have the option for different liners right from the factory, so Mopar aftermarket as well. So it's gonna depend on what you like the look of and what your needs are. If you're gonna be getting this thing messy, would definitely recommend some sort of protector here, thermoplastic rubber tray, in order to make sure you can just kind of pop out muddy boots and things like that to spray it off rather than damaging this beautiful cloth in the back instead. But we do have this fully removable tray, which is great. 
Lifting it up, this one, because we're in the Trail Hockey Elite, has a full-size spare tire as well. So if you ever puncture when you're off tra when you're going on trails and things like that, you're covered off there. We've got our jack and things like that right underneath as well, which is fantastic. Well, that was a look at the 2022 Jeep Compass. What did you think? I love the redesign. I think they did a phenomenal job with this vehicle. But what are your thoughts? Share them down in the comment section below and let me know. But if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up, share it with your social networks if you think someone could get use out of it. And I did mention you can find the contact information for Pickering Dodge Chrysler Jeep down in the description. You can find a build link for this vehicle on top of that down there too. But if you enjoyed this one, like it, subscribe if you haven't already. And until I see you next time, take care.